Let's take a closer look at loading and handling part files with the CNC cut controller. Here in the shape library, we can select up to 50 preloaded shapes and modify their dimensions. I'll select this circle to show what I'm talking about. In the right side, you can modify the dimensions and below that, it will show you which dimension corresponds to which line. With F1 and F2 on some shapes, you can switch between inside and outside cuts so you can get the cleanest result possible. The CNC plasma table is shipped configured to metric units. Everything you've seen so far is in millimeters or millimeters per minute for movement. Changing this to imperial units is easy. First, we go to the diagnose menu with F5, then press F8, system definitions, then F3, define, Enter password 1396. Press F5 option. Now on the list we see default units. We can change this to the imperial units. Press F8, save. And now we have to turn the table off and back on to cycle it. Once we're booted up again, the table is now in inches and inches per minute. Pressing F2 from the main cut screen takes you to the file browser. Here you access files on the inserted USB drive or file saved to the machine. Pressing F2 will get you to the files on the inserted USB drive. Pressing enter on a file will load it and temporarily save it until another is quick loaded, meaning it will save through machine power cycles, but when another is quick loaded, it will overwrite the previous file. Let's say you have a production piece that gets cut regularly. It makes sense to save that to the machine, right? To do that, go back to the USB drive, use the arrow keys to navigate to the file, and press F6 to save it to the machine. Confirm the name, now it's right here in disk files. Something useful if you end up with a lot of poorly named files is the preview button F7. It will show a thumbnail of the part, so you select the right one first try. Something to note is that the maximum USB drive size the machine will work with is 16 gigabytes, and it has to be formatted to the FAT or FAT32 file system. Moving on to the F3 part option menu, the first option F1 start point, lets us move the start point to any corner, left bottom, top right, and so on, or center it up. Using these makes it easy to line up the part with how you want it on the plate for the most effective utilization of your material. F2, angle, lets us rotate the part right in the machine here. If we wanted this piece 90 degrees clockwise, I like to use F2, input rotation angle. The others are just framing the rotation in a different perspective, but you can get the same results if you like those options better. Here it says positive is clockwise, so I'll punch in 90, press OK. F3, array. We'll create a grid of the current part. I'll make a staggered array for demonstration. The default offsets put the parts right against each other, which doesn't always work out great. I recommend adding at least 10 millimeters to the offsets. The number of rows is vertical, or y-axis part count, and the number of columns is horizontal, or x-axis part count. F4 scale can be used to make a large or small change in overall part size. One is your current scale. If you wanted to go up 50% larger, punch in 1.5. 50% smaller, punch in 0.5. At any point, if you want to undo the changes you've made in here, press escape or F7 once. F5 isn't a feature I utilize much, but it lets you select the pierce or line you want to start at. This would be useful if you wanted to skip over parts of a cut and start later in a part file. F6 is another situation specific tool. You can edit the G code manually and save it. F8, as always, is your save and continue button. Double tap that and the changes made will be put in effect. 